today I have Jennifer Rigsby in the house. Hi, Jennifer. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you on and hear your stories. I know me too. I saw when I saw this whole thing going down, I was like, I've got stories for days. I could just do this for <laughs> however long you need. So I'm, I, I think it's a really cool concept. It's fun. Well, you know, what's really cool is that you are the first person that has reached out to me from listening to the podcast that I didn't previously know. So you get a little award for being like the first. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> So you are in Orlando, Florida. I am. And have you, yeah, tell me a little bit about Orlando and, um, you know, what you do and how you got started. So um, I've actually, I'm a native. Um, I've lived in Florida and primarily Orlando my whole life. Um, so that's, you know, that's always a fun um, subject with people. You know, they're like, wait a minute, what? We do exist. There are people that have lived here and grown up here. Um, <laughs> Orlando, of course, I mean, and everybody, stayed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Orlando, of course, everybody, you know, knows Mickey Mouse and we do live in his backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, Orlando is a, a really cool, diverse city. Um, you know, central Florida in itself has like so much to offer, you know, we're no more than like an hour from either coast. So beaches, we've got tons of, you know, really great, like outdoor things to do and, um, you can pretty much pick a country and want to eat there and boom, you're gone. Like you can, I mean, everything is here. There's no, there's no restrictions or anything. It's, it's a cool place. So how did you get started in the adventurous life of real estate? So looking back, I realized I've been in real estate in one form or the other for a long time and just never put that all together. Um, my current um, residential now um, is eight years. I've been with the same team for that amount of time. Um, one of my friends from high school um, posted on Facebook one day that, you know, her team was looking for some help and I despised my job at the time. And I was like, me. So, um, <laughs> so I kind of raised my hand and I went in for an interview and the rest is history, I guess. That's and you're still with the same team all these all these years. All these years. Oh, yep. that's cool. Um, our team is really cool. It's it's we started, you know, of course, kind of small. We're definitely a large group now in the area, and um, I don't know. We're we're it's kind of like my my second family. You know, I mean, we just yeah, everyone gels really well, and we just you know get along great, and we teach and learn from each other, and it's a cool environment for sure. You were really lucky to get into that. I know a lot of people you know, don't have a good experience being in a team. So it's, it's interesting to hear of someone being in a, in a positive team, having a positive experience. I love it. I mean, you know, Jenny and, and Mike who run our team, Jenny is just, you know, she's, she's the best and, you know, she teaches all of us, you know, the ways and, you know, it's kind of funny, like we've all sort of just, um, I don't know, like it's a magnet, right. And she's just attracted all these mm -hmm. really awesome people and, you know, it's that servant heart idea. Um, we really try to focus on a referral based, you know, kind of network. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we do all the things, you know, because that's what we do are realtors, right? So um, yeah, though, I'm really lucky. I'm super lucky. And I know that and I say it every single day. And I joke <laughs> with them. I'm like, I'm never leaving. And if you try to get rid of me, I'm just <laughs> going to find a tent and just sleep on the sidewalk. Stalk and you. <laughs> you. Let me back in. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. And I, I do. I love my team. Well, eight years in the business, you have to have had a lot of crazy experiences and embarrassing moments. Are there any that kind of come to mind that you can share with us? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> that was a quick yes. <laughs> so the best one that is kind of infamous um, with my friends and coworkers is um, I was meeting a, a new client and had never met them before. It was a family. They were um, coming to Florida, you know, on a mission to buy. And um, so we had our day planned out. You know, I think we probably had, I don't know, eight or nine, 10 houses to see that day. Um, it was like a get in the car, we're going for it. Uh, we yeah. get to mm -hmm. the first house and obviously in an effort to just be, you know, on top of it, I'm like shuffling around and I run to the back <laughs> side of the house to grab the lockbox. 
and I'm rounding the side of the house. And um, about three seconds later, I find myself on like all fours. Um, I had wedges on and apparently there was a heaving in this in the sidewalk and I basically Superman flew off of it and <laughs> oh, on no. The oh no um, of course I jumped back up and I'm like it's fine it's fine you know like trying to pretend that it wasn't you know um, <laughs> that I didn't just fall in front of a client and of course they're like <laughs> oh my gosh are you okay and I'm like it's fine it's fine everything's fine so I go to walk towards the the door with the key and all of a sudden the little girl she's like oh my gosh and she starts <laughs> like pointing at my legs and at that moment is when I felt um the blood going down my leg oh. and I looked down and it's it's it was pretty wicked um oh, and of man. course I'm just like it's fine it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> Play it off. And we go to the door and of course, and they were the sweetest family. And the husband was like, no, 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 we have to fix this. He, we opened the door and he dispatched his family basically to every bathroom to find a first aid kit. Um, we end up in one bathroom and he insists on like essentially patching my leg up. We ended up leaving a, a like trash can full of bloody gauze and oh my god it was gross and <laughs> and we didn't of course of, of course we didn't offer on the house but I did have to tell the um the listing agent that I left a whole basket full of bloody things in the <laughs> but it was just my knee and there was no head injuries and everything is fine and I was sorry <laughs> Well, it's so funny that you say head injuries because I had a, a similar experience um, showing a house. I was meeting again, yeah, clients for the first time, right? You're trying to be way cool. And yeah, I was walking towards the lockbox and I didn't see that the roof kind of the overhang was a little bit low. And I just rammed my head straight into the corner Ooh. of it, which was metal. <laughs> And I looked around like, oh, did they notice that? And they just looked like, oh, my God, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. So I go to lean down to open the lockbox. And again, that's when you feel this warm gush of liquid coming down my face. And I realized, oh, my God, I've got blood just streaming down my face. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to terrify these poor people. So I had a red sweater on, thank God. I took the red sweater off and kind of wiped my neck and my face off and then wrapped it around my head like a turban. <laughs> like, I mean, that and <laughs> I didn't want to scare their little kid. And I just was like, hey, I'm going to let you into the house while I go to the bathroom. I just got a little cut, just a little cut on my head. And they look mortified. And terrified, terrified. And so I did, I literally went into the bathroom and I like took the, the sweater off my head and it was just gushing blood down my face. There was blood all over the counter in the bathroom. I'm like, how am I going to clean this up? So nobody knows what just, just happened, happened in here. Yeah. It looked like there was a murder in their bathroom. <laughs> so I had to clean it all up and, uh, you know, just got it to stop bleeding just so I could go on and show them a few more houses and then is, go home and that is kind of, <laughs> like that is yeah. the all time wrap my head have a new hat slash turban on that I didn't start my yeah. day with um that's that's hardcore because you're like if I don't show these people the house they're gonna go somewhere else so you're like I gotta just play this off deal with the pain for a few hours and then go home and cry oh, about it I, I still have scars <laughs> like on my knee from that moment. And I still, oh they're past clients gosh. and every now and then I still talk to them and they asked me, they've asked me before, like, how was your yeah. knee? <laughs> At closing day, they actually were like, how's your knee? And I'm like, well, the scars really, um, yep. It's, it's looking great. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, is that funny? But it is the thing that they remember most about you. So you obviously left a good impression. <laughs> I think I did. And I told them the next time around when they get to sell this, the house they did purchase and, you know, we won't, we won't have any injuries or hospital visits or, you know, anything like that. Involved. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> I hope. Well, the story that you're on here to share is really interesting because I don't think it's like the typical, you know, quirky story and actually kind of raises a few questions for me about disclosure. Yeah. 
and, um, you know, what people should just, you know, let you know ahead of time before you go to a house, you know? So I'm just going to let you tell the story from the very beginning because it was a little scary when you told me about it's little, it. It's interesting. Um, so to be fair, this is, it only happened, has, it, this has only happened once in my career so far. So I don't know if that's, you know, what that says, but, um, I was meeting a new client again, it's always the new client and, um, mm-hmm. I show up at a house and we're walking up to the door and it's a husband and wife and myself and the seller was letting us in. So ring the doorbell and as we're standing there, the wife looks at me and she goes, oh no, I'm not going in there. And I kind of get this mm. look like, oh, okay, wh- uh, why? Uh, as I'm asking her, I see the seller, you know, through the reflection in the glass, like coming towards us. And she goes, do you see that sticker? And there was um, on the side of the door, like a window pane. And there was a sticker that was 666. And I didn't Um, honestly, I'm very observant, but it just didn't click. It doesn't register unless you're looking for it sometimes. Um, So I look at her and I go, okay, so the seller's coming and we're going to be super polite and I understand, but we, we're, we have to go in, you know, I can't, we're standing yeah. here and she's like, okay. And so we walk in and, um, I mean, all in all the house wasn't a, a, the first impression was it was fine. I mean, it was an okay house, but it was very sparsely decorated other than a few key places. Um, all of the rooms were pretty empty with the exception of just, a massive amount of cribs in every room and no kids to be found Cri- cribs yes. like no kids no children like, like bassinets like like doll cribs or like real like cribs. real cribs like like one or more than one like, like 20 <laughs> like there was a, oh my god there was a lot of cribs and so my first thought was well maybe she has a daycare i don't know i mean that's I, i'm not sure 20 kids worth of dick of Chris. <laughs> so, oh my so the husband and wife are, are kind of, um, you know, muttering and talking to themselves and I'm just, you know, playing, you know, just walking through the house, checking mm-hmm. things out. And I do get to the kitchen and I notice that the one place that is very decorated is the kitchen. And there are roosters, roosters just top to bottom. So we're talking roosters on the tile, on the, mm. you know, wallpaper, Everywhere, plates, dishes, um, little statues, uh, everywhere. There were roosters everywhere. So like a country kitchen, but just like OCD like, roosters? Like grandma's country kitchen that just never stopped. Yes. Like it was. Oh my God. So uh, that I thought was interesting. And of course, you know, we're walking through yeah. and there's just cribs. and. I would think, okay, they collect roosters, honestly. Just putting that out there. I'd well, be like, oh, they collect roosters. Like some people collect angels. You know, to be fair, Florida is, you know, we are still, I think people forget, but we are Southern, right? Like, so yeah, there are a lot of, you know, country, um, decor, um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of country decor here. So it didn't necessarily really like, it kind of struck me as strange of the amount of things, but it wasn't that, you know, there was, it didn't, it wasn't odd. So yeah, we keep walking through the house and, um, you know, and we're kind of shuffling through pretty quickly because again, this, this, you know, the buyers are like full out on this, right? Well, yeah. the wife kind of looks at me and gives me the eye and I'm like, okay, we're done. You know, well, the husband um, goes and starts talking to the seller and um, the seller actually, you could tell didn't speak much English, I think, and um, yeah. spoke primarily Spanish and my buyers spoke Spanish. And so the husband kind of not corners him, but grabs him and starts asking him some questions. And, you know, I, I just let it happen. It's fine. So mm-hmm. we go to walk outside. Cause you probably think they're asking about the neighborhood Correct. or something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cause I can't, I did, you know, I, I know a few words here and there, but I don't know enough to be able to, you know, peek in and understand this the conversation. Whole yeah. right. I'm just nodding and smiling. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> we go um, outside, um, we finish the showing and the wife immediately grabs my hand, grabs her husband's hand and she 
pulls us to the middle of the driveway and she is like, we are, we're praying right now. And I just look at her, with mm. a, you know, like a deer in the headlights look maybe. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm like, Whoa. you're like, because of a sticker. Right. And she goes <laughs> that sticker, this house. And she, so she tells um, the husband to tell me what the conversation was. And so the husband proceeds to, to tell us that the, that he asked, you know, well, what is, what is the sticker all about? Cause we noticed it on the way in and the seller decides to um, let him know that yes, they um, are a home that does worship Satan and <sighs> Satan in their mind. Um, it was a whole very long story that Satan is, you know, God's brother and everything is fine. It's okay. As long as you worship one of them mm-hmm. and I'm paraphrasing. And honestly, I, you know, I, I don't know enough to be able to, you know, <laughs> yeah, through the stories t- but of like that. But he, um, <laughs> yeah, he proceeded to tell us that that you know they did worship Satan, and you know, um, and the seller then told him that the reason there were so many roosters in the kitchen is that Satan, um, the roosters are a sign of Satan, and so that's how you, I guess, show your. I don't know, loyalty? I'm not sure. Loyalty? Oh my god. The roosters were it gives me chills. That's so creepy. That is the creepiest thing. And so, you know, the, of course the and then, you know, the wife looks at me and she kind of gives me the like, I told you look. And so <laughs> she grabs my hand and, you know, so we're literally standing in this this, you know, couple's driveway praying. This woman is like you know, starts shouting literally to the sky. And she's like, she's like, Lord, this is, we have nothing to do with this house. Do not blame us. Do not associate. It was the, I mean, I, I want to say it was the funniest thing, but it was also just like one of the more odd situations I've ever encountered. And I just, yeah, I just, because how do you it. even deal with that? We, and then don't you, did you ever say anything to the listing agent? Because he had to have known or he or she had to have known. So, Like, you know, your clients. <laughs> back, I did not say anything to the listing agent. I have in past told listing agents when something, you know, maybe like that has happened. And I want to say that was very much like in the very beginning of like my career. So I just don't mm-hmm. know if I, you know, I probably just thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to tell this guy? I mean, what if, what if he's, yeah. you know, doing the same thing. I don't know. Um, so I, I did let that lie, but, um, it was, it was definitely, I mean, I, I remember getting my car and just immediately like picking my phone up and I'm sure I called either, you know, like my partner on the team or, uh, my best friend or someone. And I was just like, you're never going to believe what happened. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we did not, they did not purchase that home. So uh, yeah, I don't blame them for not wanting to purchase that home. That's crazy. I've never, I've never heard of that happening. And, you know, did I guess that still wouldn't explain what the cribs are. I don't know. Cause and now I'm like, what were the cribs no for? And, <laughs> you know, and maybe it's just, I don't know. You watch enough TV, right. And you assume like you hear someone that worships Satan and you assume like you're walking into like pentagrams and black and I don't know. Yes. Scary. And I mean, honestly, the house was pretty light and bright. Like you could have washed all that. Not farmhouse roosters. You, I've never heard of that. <laughs> you could have evicted the rooster, uh, you know, decor. You probably would have been okay. I mean, and it was actually a newer house too. I mean, the house was, you know, it was pretty. It, other than the same worshiping and the, I don't know the cribs. I have no idea. I mean, it was just. That's so crazy. <laughs> And I just, you know, it just, it, you know, there's so many things that you have to disclose. And then it's kind of like, where do you draw the line? You know, because that's their religious preference. Yeah. So, but again, if someone was a very Christian person and they had crosses everywhere, they're, they're Catholic. I don't know that a, a person who's worship Satan it, would want to go in that house. So maybe it, we need to disclose these things. I have no idea. So- you're right though. I mean, that is definitely, I mean, you know, that's a, that's got fair housing written all over it. Right. What do you say? Yeah. But at the same time, yeah. Where is, where is the line? And then, you know, I mean, cause I've walked into the opposite of homes where like you said, you know, you've got crosses all over the wall and it's, you know, a very like um, 
Christian home. And, you know, so I don't know what happens if you take someone like those sellers into a house like that. I don't know. Um, Yeah, I guess it has to be equal opportunity for everybody. Like your religious preference is your religious preference. But maybe the I guess the agent could have just been like, hey, call me before the showing and then been like, hey, FYI. (laughs) If this is a problem, because for some people, it wouldn't be a problem. For some people, it would definitely be a problem. Yeah, and I mean, I probably would have never known any of that, though, had my buyer not been able to, you know, communicate with the seller and had the seller not been home. I mean, we probably would have just walked in and been like, well, this is a really strange house with a lot of cribs and roosters. Okay. Like, I don't know. (laughs) You know, I mean, it, it, it was... You see all kinds of strange things in houses. Like... Normally, okay, nor- th- sometimes they're pretty normal, but sometimes you go in and you're like, something's a little shifty about this house. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. Like, do you ever go into properties like that and you're like, something's something's off? I've, the structure doesn't look quite right. Yeah, I've definitely walked into houses and just immediately gotten that feel um, or seen things, you know, maybe it's occupied and you see some sort of decoration or picture and you just immediately are like, wish I didn't see that. Nope. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I've definitely walked in homes where I feel, uh, I feel something and it's, it's, there's no way to describe it other than just that the feeling of like, I shouldn't be in here and I don't want to be in here. Um, Yeah. Uneasy. You can tell when someone who lived in a space was like a good person or not so good a person. It's just an energy. For sure. You feel uncomfortable. Houses have energies that, you know, just it's so strange how they can, you know, kind of um, put those out there to you, though. And it can be a vacant house that's been empty forever. And you can walk in a home and you just know that something weird happened here or it ain't right right. (laughs) and get out um you know never mind like the weird murder shed maybe in the backyard but just you know yes get out (laughs) you don't want to buy this house which some or secret rooms so i went into a property um it was oh gosh way down south but there was like this weird shed on the side of the house and it had a door and it was, I opened it up and it was very dark. And my clients were like, you're not going in there. And I'm like, yeah, not only am I going in there, I'm going in there with my camera on. I'm going to check this out and post it on Facebook. So (laughs) we went in and it was like three rooms and one of them had like a green light and one of them had a red light. And then there was a big hole in the, the wall of the room. And I was like, I think this is a grow room. And they were like, oh, you're right. And then that made the laundry area make much more sense because it was lined with like foil. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's got it written all over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Secret rooms. Have you ever um, been in a place that had a secret room? You have. I have. Um, My favorite is pretty pretty, um, recent, actually. So I was showing a little, um, it was actually deeded a condo, but kind of lived like a townhouse, but showing this little house and and um, I walk in and it was, um, you know, my client, it was just me and my client. And we walk in and we're like looking around, super cute, had a good feel. And I'm doing my, you know, realtor thing and looking for the red flags, right? Like you're always like, yeah, your eyes are darting everywhere, up, down, in, around. And yes, I look up and I see that the, um, the opening for the attic had a lot of handles around it. And I, I thought to myself, well, that's kind of strange. Like, why would there be so many handles around, you know, the opening? So I look at my buyer and I'm like, I think we have to look in here. Like, I don't, I have to know. Yeah, because that's, that's a realtor brain. Everyone else says, let's run away. And we go, mm, I think I'm going to open that. I, I think that looks like a good in. idea. Yeah. yeah, just like the girl. Yeah. No, I'm going in and I'm videoing it too. Um, yeah. So we we do, we, we pull down the, you know, we get pull down the hatch and, and we look up and I'm like, there is a room up there because you could see, you could see this, you know, almost the paneling on the wall. There was a ceiling Mm -hmm. fan. Um, you, you you could just tell this is a room and I look at him and I'm like, we're going up there. And, um, (laughs) so, you know, heels or not, I don't care. Like I'm going up the stairs. Like, (laughs) so I crawl up and we both are up there standing around and we're kind of like, Oddly, you know, we're, we're a little confused, but also like, 
kind of excited about it because yes. it's a little two bedroom, you know, and I'm like, well, this is a whole nother space up here, you know, like <laughs> this is, you know, my, again, my realtor brain's like, you could make, you know, 50 things out of this, this space. Yes. And um, so we're kind of looking around and we're laughing. I mean, but just because you don't expect in this, you know, little 900 mm-hmm. square foot place that you're going to find a whole nother section of it. And yeah, I kind of made a few jokes just because that's who I am. And I'm like, oh, it's probably haunted up here, but I think you could handle it, you know, and, and he kind of looks at me and he laughs and he's like, yeah, for sure. And as we both said <laughs> that and kind of like, there was like a, a half a second of silence, this like huge crash or noise kind of happened from like behind one of the like walls that was put, put in there. Oh, And my I just gosh. looked at him and I was like, our eyes were like bugs out of our heads. and I'm like okay so we're done in here and he just looks at me and he's like yeah uh-huh. so we like scurry down those stairs faster than I don't know <laughs> and you know but the best part of the whole entire story is that he actually bought it and he lived there so no did he ever have any issues after no that? he hasn't um I do check in with him <laughs> periodically and I ask him how the haunted attic is or room, whatever it is. (laughs) Um, And he loves it. So I, you know, I can't wait. It worked out. I can't wait until the day he actually decides he wants to sell that place and calls me. And I'm like, how are we going to market a haunted secret attic room? (laughs) Finished attic space, extra storage. Yeah. Well, because here, yeah, we don't have basements, so we have to have some storage somewhere. You got to put it somewhere. Yeah. So. Yeah, especially in a two bedroom condo. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So, do you have any other experiences with like secret rooms in, in places? There's, uh, yeah, I think I'm a weird magnet to them because they're just like my secret obsession, maybe. <laughs> or the universe knows I need to find all of the secret rooms. But I mean, there are, I always seem to run across, you know, like a hidden door that's actually, you know, um, a bookshelf that goes into another, you know, room in the house, maybe. And, um, I've seen it. That is so cool. Do they even disclose it? Do they even know that it's there? I have had one house that I got there and the listing agent was there with me and looks at me and goes, Hey, um, go find the secret room. There, there's a room in here. Oh, and I was like, okay, well, this is a mission. I'm, I'm not failing. Like, Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I, you know, again, like we only have so much space to work with. So a lot of people will use, you know, if it's upstairs and there is like an attic access or an attic space, they'll build out or build into it. And um, I've seen some cool ways to kind of like hide the, the doorways in, you know, like I said, the bookshelves or just hidden. That's so neat. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't really seen anything like that out here. So I don't think it's crazy common. But, um, you know, I did go into a place one time where um, there was a master bedroom and then like a office right next to it. And then there was like a bookcase that you open and it went into a massive like extra room. Yeah. But then again, the, the walls of the master bedroom were like pink fabric and it was f- like foam, like a padded <gasps> room. I was like, this is creepy. Yeah. Right here. You- <laughs> yeah, that's the one you like open the door and you're like, oh, maybe I won't put my fingerprints in here. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need any evidence left behind. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not leaving any evidence in here. Um, I did have, this is, this is very much not real estate related, but it's just funny because I don't know, I still get made fun of it for it. But um, <laughs> I went on a, a, a date with a guy and it was actually a first date. And we're sitting around and of course he's like asking me, you know, like, what do you do? And, you know, realtor and, you know, we're talking and, and, um, and he tells me that he lives in this certain part of town that is known, like they do, there are some, basically some bunkers. Um, so, you know, that whole era of Cuban missile crisis. Yes. So I tell him that I'm like immediately, you know, all in on this whole subject and, He's like, yeah, my house has one. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Oh. And he's like, do you want to come see it? I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea, but like, yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I followed him to if his If you want to have a good, a good opening line if you're dating a realtor is, hey, you want to come see my bunker? <laughs> come see my secret bunker? 
Um, and I fell for it. And I, you know, so I immediately follow him fast, you know, like tail him to his house. And I'm like, show me the bunker. Like, and I made him go down first because, you know, I am like kind of smart. You know, yeah, I'm like, well, you're smart. You don't want to be knocked over the head by a serial killer. <laughs> I made it to the house. So, I mean, you know, what, how smart was I? But um, it was actually really, it was, I don't know, it was a little bit of a letdown. It was kind of cool, but I was like, okay, I kind of wanted it to be bigger and I kind of wanted it to be way cooler, but <laughs> this is cool. And he's a great guy, by the way. Like, like dating. Super nice guy. Like dating. Yeah. And we, we didn't end up it was really a letdown. dating, but it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was funny. So. Because his bunker was too small. His bunker was way too small. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, it was yeah. So that's my my not real estate related secret hidden bunker room <laughs> weird dating story. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Well, if anyone's like thinking about moving to Orlando, what are some things that you think that they need to know about before they move to the city? Because I think you mentioned that you have a, like a season where everybody kind of flocks to buy in Florida. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, anybody from the north is they live through, you know, a winter and come, you know, anytime after the, really anytime in the beginning of the year through our spring, mm -hmm. you know, we do get a ton of people wanting to move down. They want to get away from the snow. They want to live in, you know, the hot, you know, sunshine state. So we do have a lot mm -hmm. of people that start to flock down after winter time. Um, COVID kind of changed the rules because now we just have people flocking from everywhere all the time. <laughs> I don't know if there's yeah. a rhyme or reason, but you know, they're, they're all gonna, they're, everyone's coming to live in Florida. Um, Wow. Even though we have Florida man living here, they're still coming to live with, with us. <laughs> um, do, do they get like surprised by anything? Like, oh, we didn't realize that this happens in Florida or that you have alligators in your front yard or things like so that. So actually, yes. The biggest thing is um, oh. people don't realize that, yes, we do. Alligators are a thing. Okay. And um <laughs> I was just throwing that out there. I didn't know I was going to no, be right about it. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't say that they're in your front yard every day. But yes, um, if there's a body of water and you're in Florida, there's probably an alligator in it. Um, you may see oh, them. Boy. It's okay. They're not going to come and, you know, snatch you. Um, I think the funniest thing people don't realize is like how many bugs, I guess, that we have here. I always get that. Oh. Like the bugs, it's either the bugs or the lizards or the alligators. Those are the three things. And yeah. I'm like, well. We got bugs. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. We have lizards. Yeah. Yes. They won't hurt you. And we do have alligators. Yes. I can't, I cannot deny that. Um, what about the heat? Do they get used to the heat? I think people do get used to the heat. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I can't run on anything else other than our crazy humid heat, but um, I think you, yeah, you get used to it. I think so. I mean, it's, I feel like it's better than shoveling snow and being like, you know, yeah. 40 degrees. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I'm out of here. I'm not dealing with this anymore. <laughs> and black eyes. <laughs> yeah. When I picture snow, cause I'm in California, that's what I picture. Yeah. Like everything is black ice. Yeah. I don't, um, I've, I've actually seen snow legitimately like three times in my entire life. So I, I wouldn't even know where to begin with it. And that's what I tell people. Maybe that's like the pitch is like, listen, and I say this all the time. I'm like, the good news is, is that you will never, ever have to shovel snow again in your entire life if you live here. So, <laughs> you can just shovel sand and alligators. You can. you can shovel the sand and make some sand castles. Yes. <laughs> so if someone is moving to or from um, Orlando, how can they get a hold of you? So um, probably the easiest way is just calling me or texting me. My cell is 407 463 nine seven zero nine um you can find my group i work for weimert group realty um you can google that and probably find anything you could ever want to know um or you can email me and my email is um j rigsby at weimert group realty.com Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate you sharing your story. And if you have any other crazy stories, you need to come back on. Oh, don't worry. I'm, I'm all in. This is my this is my favorite <laughs> thing now. I can't wait to hear the rest of these episodes. Yeah. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. You're so welcome.